Thank you, Charmaine Cleveland. Uh, Chief uh, Doug Greener, sir. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. How are you? You've had an exciting uh, life for the last week, 10 days, haven't you? Absolutely. Actually, since J June 1st. It, it gets exciting around here. I can only, but, but, and you guys have, uh, yeah, you need to get really close to that microphone there, uh, but don't touch it because it'll break. I'm just kidding. You can try to, it will break, but just, you're the fire chief. You can break whatever you want. Because um, people don't realize BPD's had, or BFD has had uh, folks up on that fire line up that Erskine fire too, right? Or at yeah, least personnel up there. We, we did. We had uh, uh, five uh, fire engines up there, 16 personnel over the course of the last week. Uh, fortunately, they're, uh, they're all back now. I think, but they're estimating about 70% containment on that fire, so they start to, uh, you know, release local resources first. So our folks are back in town with their engines, which is really important for us since we have the 4th of July weekend coming up. Right, which is, and we, it, it, we sort of laugh about it because it is borderline comical it's so out of control in this town. It's um, out of control. Yeah, it is Fallujah. It is. For, uh, and, and, and by the way, just, I'm just going to throw this out there. I... It's already started in my neighborhood. Like th June, the, I think the twenty seventh was the first time we noticed it. Uh, seriously, illegal fireworks. Yeah, uh, and, in the neighborhood, and that's not uncommon across the city. We're we're hearing reports that folks have already been out and uh, discharging illegal fireworks, and it's the same thing every year. You know, in spite of the fact that we've we started a campaign basically June first. Uh, through social media and, and the general media, trying to educate people on what's legal, what's not legal, uh, what's going to happen if they get caught with illegal fireworks. Um, frankly, I think most people are just willing to spin the wheel and take the risk and because they, they want their fun. Yeah. You know, and it's unfortunate, but it, it's, it's getting crazier and crazier every year. So. And I can tell you right now, uh, my fun will be denied because I, uh, I offered to pay your fine in advance if we could just light off any of this in Lewis, in Lewis Henry's <laughs> office. Oh, my gosh. She's gonna or how about in her parking space? <laughs> you think uh, that people would be more sensitive this year, you know, after this Erskine fire? And they're not. Be more aware. I, dare, I promise you they're not. And here's what uh, uh, the chief is here to discuss because we do this every year. People still don't know what it, you still get that with the people telling you, well, I didn't know this was illegal. Right. Right, correct. Anything that shoots up in the air. Yeah, so in a nutshell, anything that spins, flies, otherwise leaves the ground or explodes and doesn't carry the state fire marshal seal of approval is illegal. So that's, that's fairly simple. If it goes up in the air, if it blows up, and if it's not approved, it's illegal. No. Now, in these you brought in today, you brought uh, you brought like a Roman candle. You brought a sele lovely selection of mortars. Thank yes, you for that. You bet. What are those? Co what are those composed of? How much gunpowder is in that little uh, little ball there? You know, I don't know specific amounts, but I do know, know that they are uh, very common. Uh, we see those quite frequently here in the metro area, and they are impressive. Uh, they put off an impressive display. They have some explosive power. Uh, those mortars, uh, we believe, are responsible for uh, a structure fire uh, in 2015 uh, that was in excess of $500,000 worth of damage. Oh my God, and they're so small, and, and yet they pack such a punch yeah. for damage. Oh. And here's, and so do you go buy these like at these fire? Like if I was in Missouri, I went to a fireworks store. You could just buy these mortars just like this. And then you just shoot them out of a tube of some kind. Yes, they, they typically come with a tube similar to this this device here, and I, I think that's. Part of the problem is folks travel outside of California and they, they go to states where these types of fireworks are legal. Believe it or not, it's insane to me that they are legal anywhere. Um, but they pick them up uh, legally out of state, bring them back. And cheap, and, too. And cheap. And then they bring them back and then they shoot them off in Bakersfield. Yeah. Um, so that's unfortunate. The, the other issue that we're facing uh, as well, too, is that a lot of fireworks um, like this uh, they come in through California for import to states where they are legal. So at some point when they come in through San Francisco, the Port of Los Angeles, the Port of Long Beach, they're diverted um, and then sold in, in the state. And that's that's a big issue, too. Wow. Yeah, and in that part of it's legal. You can get a truck, you get a uh, literally a shipload of fireworks from China pulls into Long Beach, headed for, let's say, Oklahoma, Texas, somewhere where they're legal. And they can show up there, and that load can be three tons light. Right, and there's and you would think that somebody, the ATF or somebody, would swing into action. They don't. There's there's literally it happens all day every day. Yes, because they cut these deals. Well, I'll take a I'll take a ton of them off your hands, and they're going through California, and they're showing up in Arizona and New Mexico, uh, short tons of fireworks. Where are they going? Well. Uh, the, some of them are right here on our table today. Is I'm assuming you confiscated these. Yeah, yeah, these are confiscated. We actually uh, typically have a fairly large cache of illegal fireworks uh, in the BFD arson division. Um, 
but uh, the state fire marshal did pick up uh, our cash earlier this year. So uh, the, these are representative of what we see here in Bakersfield. But man, we had some amazing, really unfortunately impressive uh, explosive devices. I mean, mortars that are like the size of a grape. Yeah, we are, we are, we've gone past fireworks to ordinance, to yes. military grade ordinance. It's a big deal. I yeah. mean, it's uh, very dangerous. Now, something you tell me is really interesting is that there's a difference between what's legal in the city of Bakersfield versus what the fire marshal may have approved in the, in the yeah, county. Yeah, the county will let you buy Piccolo Pete's. So, can yeah. you Which, tell us a about that? Piccolo Pete's have no reason to exist other than to irritate animals. <laughs> and you so can true. And you can <laughs> scrape the, uh, the powder out of them and make bombs, and people do. People are doing that right now. Yes, and, and I won't go into the, into the details, but it's even easier than that. You don't even have to break them open. Very simple modification to a Piccolo Pete turns it into an explosive device. And, it, and we talked about this a little bit earlier. Piccolo Pete was involved in a uh, death in, here in Bakersfield in 2004, a fireworks-related death. So that was one of the motivations behind the city uh, and the city council um, allowing us to ban Piccolo Pete's and ground bloom flowers, which are sort of another story on their own. Um, but there is a difference between city and county regulations, and that's yeah. important for folks to know. You can't go into the county and buy a Piccolo Pete and come into the city and discharge it. Um, so it'd be nice if we got on the same page on that at some point. Um, it'd make it easier for everybody. Uh, we're not there yet, but I, I think uh, we're making progress. I mean, the, the council did tighten some regulations this year, which is good, and I think will be somewhat helpful. Um, and I think it sends a message to the community that we're serious about you know, the sort of activity we're going to try and crack down on as, as much as we can. Yeah. And if you want to and buy, get a great big Sharpie or a crayon or whatever and write this phone number down, 868-6070, put it on the refrigerator, put it wherever on, on the, well, tonight through the 4th of July, that is the uh, number, that's the hotline number to call if you see illegal fireworks activity in your neighborhood. Now, what is a reasonable expectation if I call that number? Because when you're so overwhelmed on the fourth, let's be honest, you're not going to go to every. You can't go to every one. Well, the the hotline will actually be staffed uh, July third and July fourth between seven p.m. and and twelve midnight. Um, and you know, I, I I don't want to discourage people from calling it, but but I also don't want them to be discouraged when they do call it and they don't get an immediate response because. We have 18 folks up in the in the call center, and they are swamped. Yeah, they got a phone up to each ear. They're going yes. as lickety split as they can. And we, then on the other end of that, if you want to dispatch somebody out to that neighborhood, those guys got a waiting list every bit as long, if not longer. Yeah, there, there's a ton of activity. There are always multiple calls in the queue waiting to be responded to. Um, we encourage folks to call in, but don't, don't be discouraged or disappointed when the response I isn't immediate. We will, we will get there as soon as we can, but they have to realize we're dealing with thousands, literally thousands of calls for illegal fireworks. Yeah. And the ones in uh, my neighborhood, which are right on the street next to mine, right on the, I know exactly where they are. I go over there every 4th of July just to see what's up. And they have their routine down. They go out of the house, they shoot these things off, they run back in the house. If I were to call, you'd have to literally be sitting on that street to catch them doing it. Yes. And they know how to do that. Yep. Um, and it's it's and there's so many people doing that at any given time. It's really unbelievable. Can you hang out for a few minutes? Absolutely. We got to take a break. We'll be right back more with uh, Chief. If you got a question, comment, concern, eight four two Kern. That's our number, eight four two five three seven six. We'll be right back. It's first look program. It's News Talk eleven eighty and the new ninety six one K E R N. We're streaming live on the internet at Bakersfield.com. We found out during the break, uh, Charmaine shot a Roman candle at your car one time, dude. That is absolutely That's amazing. not true. Well, I'm we, sure she doesn't remember it, though, because, you know. Well, and what we discussed was is this year we were allowed firefighters will be writing administrative citations. So I don't have to actually see her mm -hmm. do it. I can take Scott's word for it. Bingo. And you're, then, in, you're going to the big it's house. It's a preponderance of evidence. Alcatraz. So. Okay, Al I... We got you on this one. <laughs> just You already confessed, so just... <laughs> Don't this make... is really embarrassing. Okay, hold on. No, you know what? The set we were just uh, teasing Charmaine okay. because why wouldn't we? Um, but you've actually had people in in a marked fire department car shoot Roman candles at your vehicle. Yes, uh, BFD firefighters have been uh, shot at uh, Roman candles, um, bottle rockets. They've had fireworks thrown at them. I personally have been out on the Fourth of July uh, on enforcement efforts, and I, I drive a marked red BFD vehicle. And I've had folks uh, shoot flaming balls at my car. Yeah. Uh, 
So it's just a completely out of control. That's yeah. That's in what people don't realize because they, they it makes it sound like the enforcement part of this is pretty simple. You have firefighters that have to wait for cops to show up. They have a staging area. They all roll in there together, and you get out of your car, and there's literally a hundred drunk high felons out there, uh, shirtless, <laughs> angry. And they don't want you to be there. They see you're there to ruin their good time. And you're supposed to find the guy who, okay, who lit this? I'm going to give him a citation. Let's be honest. That is not a great use of resources. And, and you just described to a T some of the situations our folks experience every year. Yeah. It, it's that bad. It's that way. So now you guys have this new citation process. Is this new this year? Yes. Okay, so continue to tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing differently. Well, in the, in the past, and, and our enforcement teams are made up of a single BFD firefighter and a BPD officer. So we have got somebody riding, well, we're riding shotgun with someone that carries a gun and knows how to use it, which is, is uh, good g given the situations we end up in. Um, and in the past, we've administered uh, criminal citations. Criminal citations require that uh, fire and police officers really physically see what's happening uh, before they can issue the site. So in other words, we would have to see somebody discharge an illegal firework to, to cite them. The administrative citation allows us to do that with just what they what they call a preponderance of evidence. So, you know, if, if Scott sees Charmaine shooting a Roman candle at the fire chief's car, I don't necessarily have to see her do that. I can just take Scott's word for it, look at the situation, does it make sense, does it seem reasonable yeah. to me, then I can cite you for that. Okay. So my other question is, say I want to buy fireworks, but I'm not sure if it's legal or not. What am I looking for to know that these fireworks are okay to buy? Well, the main thing, and, and probably the easiest way, is to look for the state fire marshal's seal of approval. Um, it's a very specific seal that should be on all legal fireworks, okay. um, and it has the, the language safe and sane stamped on there as well. Um, that has to happen, with the exception in the city of Bakersfield of Piccolo Pete's and Grand Bloom Flowers. Those are safe and sane, but they're not allowed in the city. Um, if you buy from a reputable you know, booth here in town, you shouldn't be seeing things like aerial devices and bottle rockets and mortars and, and those sorts of uh, illegal fireworks. Um, but look for the safe and sane seal. That's probably if, the easiest. If you go to one of uh, a proper fireworks stand, it's those, those are the legit fireworks. So there really should be no excuse that, I mean, we've Oh, there, is, a, there is no excuse. The, you know, I the didn't three know. that we can't use, so it's Yeah, like, but I saw it on Craigslist. It seems like a great deal. I didn't know they were illegal. You'd be amazed at the stories people come up with. Yeah, that's... After they're cited, they come up with these stories, by the way. And then they and they frequently get uh, pled down, or they just don't show up in court. They end up not paying the fines. Well, that's that's another um, sort of a new angle with the administrative citation process. Is the court isn't going to have the first bite at this? It's going to be a city uh, administrative hearing officer who's going to determine whether or not it's a valid citation. Now they can challenge it. They can they can take it to the courts, but they still have to pay their fee and their fine up front, and then they can challenge it uh, legally. Um, so we think this is going to be better. We th we're not going to have you know anybody waving their hands and, and reducing a whole room full of citations, you know, down to ne basically nothing. I don't think that's going to be an issue uh, anymore with the with the administrative citation process. I hope it works because that money goes back into uh, to prevention efforts anyway. Yes, what exactly. little bit you get your hands on. Right, exactly. But if everybody who got cited paid a hundred percent of their citation, that would be a you'd get a pretty good chunk of change out of that. Uh, we 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 could potentially. Although I will say that between um, the efforts that that the fire department uh, started June first in terms of education, public safety, and then our enforcement, we're we're really pushing close to, and this includes the money we spent on the PSAs and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, Thirty grand, you know, to to try and get a handle on a single holiday. Um, so we would eat through some profit fairly quickly. Yeah. And the other uh, part of this, too, if people don't realize, it's kind of a perfect storm, kind of like with this Erskine fire. We had El Nino, which watered just enough stuff to get some grass and some brush to grow, and then along comes the oppressive heat and zero rain dried all that out. There's so many fires around that are just waiting to happen right now. Yes. And all it takes is one uh, careless firework to just light it right off. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, and it's not just brush and, and grass and vegetation. It's you have the heat and the low humidity, uh, cured shake shingle roofs in some of our older neighborhoods. You know, you get a wind-driven fire in one of those areas, and it's going to be tough to stop. And you've seen this happen, too. I, if you've got a, a shake roof and it's dry, 
in five minutes, you can have a full size. Two, you have a two thousand square foot house, and that roof is gone, and Absolutely. the house with it. Yeah. Before you guys can even get there and get water on it, yeah. it happens that fast. It does. They burn very rapidly. And one bottle rocket, because it's happened before, will yes. start that fire. Yes. So you got if you have a shake roof, I'm telling you, go out and wet that sucker down about four o'clock in the afternoon. Make sure it's all good and damp, and, and we still got this drought on too. And you, it's you know we don't we don't have a lot of water, extra water for you guys to go out and put ill advised fires out. But it's going to happen. Right. Uh, last year we we used uh, approximately twelve thousand gallons fighting fireworks related fires. That's a lot of water. Yeah. yeah. In a drought. Especially with the El Nino driven grass growth, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. it kind of creates just perfect formula for fires, and it's just and we're not gonna good. see them. We're gonna be here on Tuesday reporting on this stuff. I, we know we already know it. Well, let's hope we don't. You know, we've we got hope in one hand, uh, and well, you know, yeah, a, mil- a million dollars worth of property damage alone in the last two years. It's a big deal. And yeah. here's the thing, and we always, and uh, by the way, uh, Doug Greener's joining us, a uh, fire chief. You don't hate America or hate freedom or liberty or any of that stuff. <laughs> That's not why. In, that's not why you're here. That's not what any of this is about. But it's also, I don't they know. Value lives, you know. Yeah. Value property. We and- will, when the smoke settles Tuesday morning, quite literally, be <laughs> looking at property damage, injuries, potential loss of life, structures gone, all of that. And we do it every single year. And we keep trying to come up with better and better ways to make it better. And they never seem to take root. Oh, that's, that's exactly right. And, and, and folks, some folks have accused me of being unpatriotic because of my position on fireworks. And I know Lois Henry is taking a lot of heat, and I think you take a lot of heat, too. Um, but, but that's just not the case. I mean, as a public safety official, as a fire chief, it's very easy for me to, to narrowly focus on the issues surrounding fireworks and be against them, uh, just purely from a life safety perspective. It has nothing to do with the holiday. It has nothing to do with what's behind the holiday. Um, you know, but I will say when we're out there, we don't see a lot of folks sitting around waving the American flag and, you, you know, and, and, and so if it's about patriotism, we're not seeing it out there. We see a lot of people intoxicated in public and breaking the law. That's what we're seeing. No. Uh, well, uh, best to you and all the firefighters give them all a Cause that's a dangerous night, man. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's just one of those times you look at the calendar and you just cringe, man. Like, oh God, I'm on duty that night. All yeah, hands on absolutely. deck. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, be careful out there. Hopefully uh, none of you, at least all the firefighters and police and sheriffs will make it home safely. Seems to be about the best we can hope for. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, come back whenever you can uh, next year. We'll do all this stuff again. Do I, when we don't get to keep these, is my understanding? <laughs> no, not unless you'd like to have a, a citation go along I with would, it. I don't think you probably want that. No, Charmaine would just shoot them at your car anyway. And well, nobody, that's true. Uh, nobody really again, wins that's her. not true. Not when we get back person. from the break, <laughs> Vice Mayor, uh, in, he's City Councilman uh, Harold Hansen, but he, you know he's also Vice Mayor? Yes. How about that? That's kind of cool. Talk about the city budget and stuff. I hopefully. think he'd make a good mayor, mayor, but uh, he's, I guess he liked the city council. Uh, city council, you probably get more done than a mayor can anyway. Uh, but we're going to talk to him, see what's going on in Fifth Ward and in this I Street time. I mean, Stephanie Diaz will be here. Uh, and she's bringing the guy from the Tiki Bar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to check that out. That's hottest like the, new exotic location in Vegas. When it's 110 degrees outside, you want, how about a nice, cool indoor place you know what i mean just to go out and have a beverage and a a nice adult conversation seems like a good place to get that done but we'll find out more it's in the paper too by the way you could look at it at bakersfield.com or get your californian but she's going to bring the owner in and tell them how they came up with the idea we'll be right back be careful this fourth of july it's news talk 1180 the new 96.1 kern we're streaming live on the internet at bakersfield.com